Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. You're welcome to the Narrow West Christ for All Nations. I am Brother House and Adeli. Today we're going to be talking about the grace to die. A lot of people are concerned about life and they are carried away by the thought of life and the fear of death. Grace, as we all know it, is unmerited favor. There is a grace to live. There is a grace to receive salvation. We are all saved through grace by faith in the name of Jesus Christ alone. But there is the grace to also die. Every time we talk, we say, well, by the grace of God, I will do this tomorrow. By the grace of God, I'm going to do that tomorrow. When we will depart from this world we need the grace of god that same moment that is what we're going to be talking about today the grace to die many people are concerned about how they are going to die when they are going to die but they care less about where they are dying to what is the destination where is this death transporting you to but we should be more concerned about where we're being transported to than through what through whom or when we are going to die the grace to die is very very important let us pray oh lord our king we come before you today we ask that you feel our emptiness with your word we are strangers in this world through death we shall escape from eternal death lord we ask that you help us to number our days while we are alive help us to number every hour help us to number our years help us to number all our days so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom there are so many flashy things that can draw one away you said in your word that whoever puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven we have put our hands to the plow help us never to look back help us to love you in death and in life let us be yours whether we live or we die we are yours Lord help us to have this true understanding may your word heal us may your word revive us may your word wake us up again in Jesus Christ's name we pray amen please I encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you're watching on facebook please follow like this page today we're talking about the grace to die do we need grace before we can die yes it is very very important we need the grace to die let's look at the bible we are going to these are our tests these two passages luke 23 46 and acts 759 and when jesus had cried with a loud voice he said father to thy hands i commend my spirit and having said thus he gave up the ghost and this is act 759 and the stone stephen calling upon god and saying lord jesus receive my spirit these are two people departing this world and they have this understanding that they need to commit their spirit into the hand of someone jesus christ prayed and committed his spirit into the hand of his father he said father into you into the hands i commend my spirit Stephen did the same thing. These people had 
a different understanding of death from our own. They had the understanding that death is not the end of life. The death is the beginning of the phase of eternal life. Either eternal life or eternal death. How deceived have we become to fear death so much to the point that a lot of people give up on eternal life because of their fear of physical death? This is stupidity. You can't trade your eternity for the life that is not less than 120 years here in this world of trouble. May God give us true understanding. When we leave this world, we need the grace to die well. When we want to give birth, we make arrangements. We, we make arrangements, we buy baby things, in fact, to the point that we even try to know the sex of the baby. Oh, it's a boy, it's a girl, and we try to make preparation. Some people go ahead to do baby shower. They prepare. They even meet the doctor, perform scan, and tell them when the baby is likely to arrive. EDD. Okay, this is when the baby is going to come. They prepare. And when we are born, we celebrate our birth days till we die. Even before we even know, um, our parents help us to celebrate our birthdays. But mine uh, was an exception. My parents never celebrated my birthday. <laughs> and I have never celebrated my birthday. <laughs> hey, most of my birthdays, I fast. <laughs> I haven't celebrated. Uh, not because it is wrong, but uh, it's not time yet. I know when I'm going to start celebrating. It could be as from next year, but there is something I need before I start celebrating my birthdays. So we celebrate celebrate our birthdays in this world through the days of our lives. Oh, golden jubilee, Siva jubilee, and we keep celebrating. We celebrate the days. The day we are born into this world of sin. But not many people remember that we are going to depart from this world. Do you know what this world is? Job described this world and he said, Man that is born of a woman is of few days, and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. Job 14, 1 and 2. So, we celebrate this. We are born into this dark world of sin. But how many of us celebrate the day we are born again? A lot of us don't even know the day we gave our lives to Christ. The day we were born again. The day we say, oh, from this day, I'm going to follow the Lord. And we gave up the world and carry our cross. Many of us don't know. The day you were born again is more important than the day you were born into this world. If we can remember the day we were born into the sinful world, many of us forget why can't we remember the day we were born into the kingdom of god we have to correct that we need to celebrate the day we were born into the kingdom of god apart from that i want to let us know that this world we spend few years here just very few years we don't have many we don't have much time here and we we believe it. And because of the way we have been brainwashed, a lot of people they demonize death. 
if those in the world demonize this, you as a believer, you don't need to demonize this. Because Jesus Christ said, none of the hair of your head will fall to the ground except by the will of your Father. You are the apple of his eyes. And you are written on, you are engraved on the palms of God. Your walls are ever before him. So there is nothing that is going to snatch you away by mistake. Except by the will of the one that sent you here. I tell people that God doesn't send people into this world by mistake. And he doesn't take people out of this world by mistake. Both are very, very intentional. We have the express will of God and the permissible will of God. So God could permit something, but it may not be his express will. But it wasn't without his knowledge. God knows everything, including the number of the hair of our head. He knows the, the names of all the stars. He is not unconscious. Of the things he created. When I comb my hair, I don't even know how many hair that breaks, how many strands that break out of my hair. I don't know. But God knows. None falls to the ground except by his knowledge. But we are so afraid of death to the point that we deny the Lord of life. Because we don't want to die now. But definitely, whether we like it or not, we are going to die. Is death an evil thing? Even in the sight of God? Well, let's go back to the beginning. In the beginning, death wasn't the original plan of God. God didn't create death for man. It was disobedience that actually brought death disobedience of Adam and Eve but there is an alternative that alternative is that we can still have eternal life the paradise we lost we will get it back the eternal life we lost we will get it back through faith in Jesus Christ alone not by works but by faith alone through grace Death is a penalty that everyone must pay, except those who are going to be raptured and those who the Lord is going to meet on earth after the great tribulation. These people are not going to taste death at all. But for the rest of the people, death is a must. I see people saying, brother, will you die? I shall not die. Sister, will you die? I shall not die. Brother, will you die? I shall not die. But live to declare the works of God. Yes, we will not die. We will not die before our time. But slowly, we are dying. <laughs> By October, I will be 40 years old. I'm aging. <laughs> some months from now, or some years from now, I'm going to be told, but I know it's not very far from now, I'm going to be told, oh, you have to be conscious of your meat consumption, you have to be conscious of this, you have to be conscious of that. A few days ago, I saw a very old man who was walking on the road slowly because he was old, very old man. He was not standing, walking erect, he was bent, kind of bent over a little. And I looked at him and I laughed. I said, we are all flying away. I said it, and I heard myself saying it. We are flying away. We will all go. If you like, bind death. The day the angel of death is coming for you, you will go. So we need to be ready now. Be ready, be prepared. We can bind death. Death is important. But a lot of us don't want to talk about it because we feel it is negative. But death is a glorious thing in the sight of the Lord. When God created the world, he created man to live forever, never to die. 
But when man sinned, the punishment of death came upon all flesh through the sin of Adam. Uh, in Genesis chapter 6, when the DNA of man became corrupt, God reduced the age of man to 120 years. But when sin continued to increase, God said his age shall not be more than 70 and 80 years. Although by grace some people get to 120, even some more, but very, very rare. So, what am I trying to say? Even if you live 120 years, you will still die. Uh, is death important? Yes, death is important. How? Why is death important? Uh, many of us celebrate our birthdays, but we don't actually celebrate our death days. Now, look at what Ecclesiastes says. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1 says, A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. <laughs> the day of birth is less important. But that's what we're concerned about. We will get angry at people sometimes. Oh, you couldn't remember my birthday. We even expect gifts from people. But there is something that is more important than the birthday. Our, our new birthday, our new best, birthday, which is the day we are born again, our born again day. That day is more important than our best day. And our death day is more important than our best day and our born again days. We should take this to heart. Uh, look at the same Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 7, 8, 8. That is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That means the end of your life is more important than the beginning of your life. The day of your death is very, very important. Fortunately, sadly, a lot of people, majority of people, don't prepare for death. But you need the grace to die. You don't just need to die anyhow. You need to die well. And Jesus and Stephen are our example. How are you going to die? Me, I don't know how I am going to die. But there is something I say every time. Every time I say this. That I don't know when I'm going to die. I don't know how I am going to die. I'm only concerned about one thing. The state. In what state? In the state of grace? Or in the state of sin. That is my focus. Me, I don't actually have any special expectation from God. That, oh God, I must live up to 80. I must live up to... No, not in this world of sin am I going to ask for many days. Because uh, to live is Christ. To die is gain. This scripture has overtaken... The whole of my life. I write it in all my Bibles. All my Bibles. I have one here. Let me open it for you. Write it on my Bibles. Okay, look at it. The first page. To live is Christ. To die is gain. All my Bibles. I write it. Philippians 1.21 For to me to live is Christ. To die is gain. We as believers must understand that there is a better home and we must live our lives consciously. We must live intentionally so that we can end up in the bosom of Abraham. We must decide 
to make sure that we die daily according to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 31. We make sure we die daily. Die to sin, die to self, die to the things of this world. And be alive in Christ. So that when we will die, we will die well. It could be through plane crash. It could be after uh, taking your bath, taking your meal, call all your children, bless them. It could be through any means. Uh, I don't have any special requests. People have their own covenants with God. People have their own requests from God. But me, I don't have any particular requests from God. I don't have requests for days, number of years. I don't have requests for special way of dying. But only one thing I ask from the Lord about my death. When I die, receive my spirit. Don't let me die in sin. If you know that I'm going to backslide today, if you know I will backslide today and I will not rise up tomorrow before I die, take my life now. Now, if I am qualified, now I'm in the state of grace, take my life now. A still born child is better than Christian who lived, served God, backslide, and end up in hell, never rise again. I say to myself, it's better to die standing than fall and never rise again. There's nothing like dying young. There's nothing like premature death before God. Um, I haven't read it. There's nothing like premature death. As a matter of fact, Time exists only in this world, not in eternity. The place we are going to, there is nothing like yes, there is nothing like, nothing like time, no day, no night, no year. The time we have here is just a little fragment of eternity. Eternity is a time that started in the beginning that has no beginning. And it's going to end in the end that has no ending. That is eternity. It has no beginning. It has no ending. That is eternity. So the place we are going to, there is nothing like days, no nights, no years, no months, no hour, no seconds, no minutes. That's a place we are going to. And we should be afraid to be careful about where death is leads us to we should be careful but a lot of us are not careful i've seen people dying with their sins they don't want to confess they are ashamed they don't want anybody to insult their children they don't want any bad name they die they choose to die with their sins cover their mouth even some children some relations and relatives when someone is trying to confess They'll say, keep quiet, don't talk. Do you want to disgrace us? <laughs> and people keep quiet. In hell, you won't be able to keep quiet. In hell, everybody will confess in hell. You know, hell um, is not a place that is meant for humans. So we should caution ourselves. Do everything possible to, to enter this heaven when you die. Try to die well. Don't just run away from a timely death. I'm not, I'm not saying that you should, uh, if you see death, you should say, oh, death, come and kill me. Or you should uh, present yourself to circumstances that are dangerous. That could be suicide. But what I'm saying is that don't be afraid of death to the point that you deny the Lord and Savior, the very Lord of life. The one that came to shed, shed his blood for you. Don't deny him because of the fear of physical death. As a matter of fact, we should also teach our children how to die. Not just how to live. We should teach our children how to die. 
We teach our children, we are so conscious about life, that we teach our children, this is how you live. We teach them all the survival techniques in life, but we don't teach them how to die. But there is a way that a child of God should die. And that is what we should teach our children. We must teach our children never to die as criminals. We must teach our children never to die like arm robbers, like prostitutes. But we must teach them that they must die as heroes, as martyrs in the kingdom. If they find the opportunity to be numbered among the saints, among those who die wrong death, facing death and choosing to live with the Lord and depart from this world. Now, let's look at this Bible verse. Psalm 116, verse 5. 116, verse 5. Precious is the sight, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. <laughs> is death precious? How? How can you say death is precious? Can death be ever precious? Oh, if death is precious in the sight of man, if we say death is precious, death of a saint, not an evil person, death of a saint is precious in the sight of a man. Uh, people may misunderstand that man to say, oh, this should be an evil man. How can you say the death of a good man is precious? But this is a law. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Yes, death is precious. Not the death of a sinner, but the death of a righteous man is precious in the sight of the Lord. Sometimes God decides to take his children home because he doesn't want them to face some temptations that are beyond their control. That could cripple their faith and heaven rejoices that finally but why is death the death of a saint precious in the sight of God I think we should also consider um, some points here why why if people demonize death why should the Bible says that it is precious in the sight of God. Well, let me tell you, it marks the end of earthly trials. The, their works are done. And when you die as a saint, the Lord has no worry over you anymore. Because all your work in the body are done. Satan can't tempt you anymore. There is no fear of, no concern of, oh, won't this my son fall? Oh, let me send an angel. Let me send a message. Let me give a dream. Let me send a money. All those concerns are no more. But you rest until the day of resurrection. Praise God. Then it is finished. John 19.30 If you die as a saint, it is finished. Just as Jesus said, Christ said, then again, your earthly work are sealed. You know, we are judged according to what we have done in the body. So, when the spirit and the soul, when they are departing from your physical body, your work on earth is sealed. That your work is finished. And if you do righteous work, there is nothing that nothing like sin that can come into your record to tamper with your salvation anymore. No, salvation is progressive. Salvation is progressive. We are saved, we are being saved, and we shall be saved. We shall receive our final salvation when the body, spirit, and soul come together. Listen, as a child of God, when you die, 
your earthly work are completed. And it is the last earthly stage of, our, of a saint's earthly journey. After that, he awaits, he or she awaits salvation. The final salvation, I mean, which is the resurrection of the body, the deliverance of the human body from death. Death give up their dead. Hell, the graves, I mean, the graves will give up all those in them. Even the seas will vomit the bones in them. For those who die in the Lord, no part of you will be missing. I've lost a part of my leg, but um, it is waiting for me in the grave, which I remind myself that, Zana, part of you is already waiting for you in the grave. It's waiting for me in the grave. I will go to meet that part of my body. No part will be missing on the day of resurrection. When we die and leave this world, we will await the reunion of the spirit part of man and the physical part of man, which is the body that, are, that death separated from our soul. Through physical death, Heaven has the final conclusion. Heaven makes the final conclusion that this one is purely our candidate. The earthly work is done. Your job on earth is done and sealed. You have made it. Uh, we don't become heavenly candidates when we die. We become heavenly candidates the day we are saved. That is why there is joy in heaven when a single soul receives salvation. So it is a day of salvation that our name is written in the book of life. It is when you receive the Lord, the moment you give your life to Christ, confess your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that moment you are saved and you are being saved. Finally, you will be saved. The death of a saint is precious. Yes, it's precious in the sight of the Lord. Those are forefathers and the early Christians who died because of their faith. They did have this level of fear of death that we have, but they died triumphantly. Because they know that death is a passage to eternity. Let me show you a hymn. A hymn, Forever with the Lord. This is a stanza form. So, when my latest breath shall rend the veil in twain, by death I shall escape from death, and life eternal gain. Through death we shall gain eternal life because if you must go to the other side except those who are going to be caught up in the rapture and those who are going to welcome the Lord when he is going to come the cloud of his glory the second coming except these two sets of people we must all die first before we can be transported into the other side of life which is the side of eternity so when my latest breath, so when my latest breath shall rend the feeling twain, by death I shall escape from death and life eternal again. Praise God. <laughs> death is a beautiful thing. Death is not an evil thing. The death of a righteous man is precious in the sight of God. Yes, because it opens up the final path for the child of God to cross to the other side where we shall forever be with the Lord. Nothing shall separate us 
again. How are you preparing for this? Every year, people celebrate their best days, but many don't concern themselves about, about their death day. You need the grace to die, not just the grace to live. Brother, sister, you need the grace to die. The grace to die well. Let me tell you, uh, someone told us a story about a woman who died. Uh, Pastor Abraham Yakubu. His videos are online. In fact, one of, one of his videos, I think one or two are on my personal channel. Rosanna E. e. David, Pastor Abraham Yakubu. His heaven and hell experience. He said he saw a woman who made the heaven. And at the point of dying, she was asking God for mercy. She was just asking God for mercy. Mercy, Lord. Mercy. I'm confessing her faith before Jesus, confessing her sins, asking God for mercy. And she died in that state. I know a man that died. Uh, we prayed together and we talked before he went into the operation room to the theater. We talked and then he went inside. Unfortunately, he did not make it. And then when he, when I was told that he died, I was just opening my door and they called me. So I just, I, I was shocked because after the surgery, I think I spoke with him before the surgery, I prayed with him after the surgery. Uh, I think I spoke with him, but he couldn't make it. He died. I was, I, I was so uh, alarmed and I just, the, the, the chair facing the door, I just knelt down as I just entered, knelt down, and I just bowed my head, and, and I was praying, I said, God, why would this man die? Why would he die? And I slept off, and the Lord spoke to me. I could remember very well that before the surgery, I gave him a, a, a word of revelation that he should reconcile with people, and he reconciled, he called people and reconciled with people. And in that revelation, the Lord spoke to me while I slept off. He told me, I have been monitoring him to see the best moment I can take his life so that he can make heaven. So the Lord gave him a message through me. I gave him this message, he reconciled with people, went into the theater, and after this successful surgery, the Lord took him. That is what I mean by the grace to die. How can you deny Jesus and get shot dead the moment of denying Jesus? <laughs> How can you deny Jesus the very day you deny Jesus, the rapture takes place and you are left behind? <laughs> God forbid. How can you serve God to the moment of your death? And then you hand over, instead of forgiving people, you hand over quarrels to your children that, you know, have a problem with this person, make sure you continue this quarrel and you die in that state. God forbid. <laughs> we need the grace to die. The grace to die. Not just the grace to live. We are alive by God's grace. And that is how we should die well by God's grace too. How many of us are ready? for this grace. Remember, the end of a thing is more important than the beginning.
So your death day is more important. Let's look at um, how these saints viewed death. They saw death as sleep. Sleep. Even Jesus Christ said that Lazarus was sleeping. But he wasn't actually sleeping. He died. So, when the Bible says those who sleep in the Lord, it is because of the understanding that that wasn't death. They slept. And whosoever sleeps has a time to wake up. They will be woken up. And waking them up is what we call resurrection. Let's look at this here. On the resurrection money, SSNS 1028. Stanza 1. On the resurrection money, soul and body meet again. These people, they talk, they sing about death, sing about resurrection. If you don't die, you won't resurrect. You have to die first before you resurrect. Soul and body meet again. No more sorrow. No more weeping, no more pain. It is only death that can land you in that state. Only death. But many of us, we don't want to die. When I see old people, old people binding death, bind you, I cast you, bind you. It's, it's good to pray. It's good to pray against death. But <laughs> you will die. <laughs> you will die. <laughs> if you like, bind death. You can bind untimely death. But you can bind your death day. That day, <laughs> the angel of death will come and take you. Death doesn't listen to wait for me. Wait. Death doesn't listen to. Death doesn't hear any other language. When God says, hey, bring that woman, bring that man, bring that boy, death doesn't listen to any other person until you have been submitted. That is why we need to get ready. Get ready. I will die too. You will die. As a matter of fact, as we're talking now, somebody is dying in the world right now. Somebody is dying. Just as they are giving birth to people. Somebody is dying. So if we must all die, why can't we prepare? Why can't we ask God for the grace to die? Look at stanza 2. Here or why? They must be parted. And the flesh, it's Sabbath keep. Yes. After staying here for a while, we part. And then the flesh will rest. That is the Sabbath keep. The flesh rest. Rest from its labor. Waiting for a holy stillness wrapped in sleep. Praise God. I know some of you um, may find it uncomfortable to say hallelujah because I'm talking about death. And I know some people are not going to waste this feeling. It's about that. But whether you watch this video or not, you will die one day. <laughs> that is why we need to be ready. People don't want to hear about death. But I tell myself every time. But I'm not dead yet. Um, the Lord is taking me. And if he asks me to come, I won't ask for an extra second. This is my conclusion for many years now. And my position hasn't changed. If he asks me to come, I won't ask for a stress support. Heaven is too beautiful to miss. Heaven is too beautiful to delay going there. I know we have a lot of work to do here. Uh, that is why we need to make the best use of every opportunity. I told someone this morning. Every opportunity you have to do good, don't miss it, do it. 
death is coming, brother. Sister, death is coming. And we will not escape it. It is coming for each and every one of us. But our concern should be that we shouldn't die before our time. Not in the hands of wicked people. Not being released, not our lives being released uh, for our enemies to tamper with. But we should believe and fulfill everything that we need to fulfill before we leave this world. This should be our prayer. And that when we are leaving this world, we shouldn't leave this world in our fallen state, but in the state of grace. This should be a prayer, this should be our daily concern. Where are you dying to? Where will you end up when you die? That's the most important thing. We shouldn't demonize death like those who don't know the Lord. If you know the Lord, don't demonize death. Because death is an important aspect of the Christian life. Death plays important role. It is death that transports us to the other side of life. I want us to read a few scriptures uh, before we pray. Romans chapter 14, 8 to 9. Let's look at how some of these uh, forefathers, early Christians, how they saw death. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we live, whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. So when you die, you don't stop being a child of God. You remain a child of God because we are his in life and in death. Death doesn't separate us. Let's look at Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 4, 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, righteous judge, should give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. This was the understanding. The understanding is to fight a good fight and secure a crown of life, the crown of salvation, and not to build houses and live very old and to a very old age and then die and go to hell or just die with a probability of okay maybe i could go to heaven or maybe i could go to hell. no but being sure that you are landing in the bosom of the lord very very important philippians chapter 1 21 to 24 this is what I wrote on the front page of my Bibles. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait between two. Having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, nevertheless to abide in the flesh, is more needful for me. Paul was saying, I am torn in between the two. To live is, is for Christ, but if I die, it is gain for me. Because um, heaven is beautiful. Heaven is a place of rest. When you die, you rest from all your labors. Death is not a bad thing. The death of a saint is not a bad thing. So we should start. We should start seeing death the way God sees it. I'm not talking about the death of a sinner. God doesn't want the death of a sinner. I'm talking about everything I've been talking about since the death of a saint. 
If you are a Christian, please stay away from sin. Always be uh, in the state of grace. So now, what do we need to do? Let's look at the Bible. If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Luke 40, 26. This is Jesus talking. If you must be his disciple, you must hate your physical life. That means put Jesus first. Put obedience to God first. If you meet with physical death, you face with death. If you're faced with death, please choose to die instead of denying the Lord of life and glory. Choose to die. Teach your children how to die. Teach them how to die for God. Teach them how to die for what they believe in. Teach them how to surrender their physical life to gain eternity. The one you live for is the one you will hand over your spirit to. So the question is, who are you living for? Are you living for Christ? You can't live for the devil, spend all your life, all your days for the devil, and then hand over your spirit to God at the point of death. It doesn't work like that. You have to labor for him. You have to accept him. You have to live for him, be in him, and he in you, abide in him, and he abides in you. And when you are dying, you commit your spirit into his head. You can be clubbing all night, and then you want to die and make heaven. It doesn't work like that. Uh, by grace, like the criminal on the cross who never lived for God, who never gave offering, never paid tithes, never evangelized, he wasn't even baptized. Please, do not live your life outside the grace of God. Every minute, confess your sins. Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. Wash your garments in the blood of the Lamb every time. There are lots of people who lived for God, but we end up in hell. Because of unconfessed sins. Because of some secret sins they never repented from. Please, uh, we are not perfect. And that is why at every point in time, we need to ask the Lord for mercy. We need to ask the Lord for forgiveness for our sins. Anyway you sin, don't be ashamed to confess. If you wrong your neighbor, please reconcile. Examine yourself every time to see if you are still in the Lord. So that when you die, you have the grace to die well. Have the grace to be in the kingdom. I have seen someone who dug his grave. And he fixed electricity there. He was a pagan. In fact, he was a witch doctor. He dug his own grave. He was conscious about how his body, where his body will lie when he dies. But he wasn't conscious of where his soul will be. How he was going to die wasn't his problem. Where he was dying to was it his problem? Let us know that we are on a journey. And that for us to die well, we need to number our days. And for us to be wise enough to number our days, we need to submit our lives to Christ. How are you living your life? Are you living your life well? Have you given your life to Christ and taken it back from Him? Because you don't want to follow. A lot of people want to give their lives. They want to accept Christ into their heart, but they don't want to follow Him. <laughs> it's not about accepting Him. 
esse bar the following not just accepting him but are you following him it's very very important that question is important are you following him let's follow the lord let's not be stubborn i want us to pray father god thank you we know we shall all fade away like the stars of the morning, losing their lights in the glorious sun. We will all, we are like the mist of the field, we are like the flowers of the field. We vanish away. Today we are, tomorrow we are no more. Give us the grace to die well. Jesus Christ lived his life for you and was careful enough to commit his spirit. He is an example of how we should die. Stephen followed the same example. He told you, Jesus, into your hands I commit my spirit. Receive my spirit. He died well. Lord, give us that same grace. We know you've given us the grace to life, the grace to salvation. But Lord, the day we will die, give us the grace to die well. And for those who have covenants with you, who ask you that, God, I don't want to die through accident. I don't want to die through plane crash. I don't want to die by food shocking me. I don't want to die but through disease. I want to take my bath, bless my children, give them my last word, and breathe my last. Lord, that's your covenant with you. That's what you're asking for. Give it to them in the name of Jesus. Those who are asking for long life, Lord, bless your children with long life. Those who need you, to help them through their weaknesses. Lord, help them through their weaknesses. May their weaknesses never take them to the place of eternal damnation. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord help you. May the Lord see you through. Whatsoever challenge you are passing through, may the Lord bring solution into your life. May you not end up in the bosom of the devil. May you end up in the bosom of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Thank you, Savior, for answering us. Pray for as many who have been supporting our ministries, those who have been supporting our charity organization. Lord, we pray that you will release your blessings upon their lives. They will not die and end up in hell. Rather, when they depart from this world, they will resurrect into eternity and reap the fruits of their labors. Even in this world, Lord, release your blessings upon their lives. Take away their pains, take away their shames. As many that are listening to this message, Lord, bless them. May your word abide in their hearts, even now, in the name of Jesus Christ. May this word make a permanent incision a permanent mark in your heart that as you live on a daily basis will be conscious of eternity so shall it be in the name of jesus thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen please if you have not subscribed subscribe to this channel and also um, we now have a u.s bank account Thank God. Our ministry has been registered in Florida. Uh, special thanks and prayers for those God used to accomplish this. Uh, I can't call your name because you are working behind the scene. You don't want human recognition. But the Lord knows you and the Lord is going to replenish you. So for those of you who are in the U.S. and you find it difficult to give, uh, this is a U.S. bank account. Uh, 
you can use it, it just take you a couple of Bye bye.